This is video number 30 from digital-university.org with our um, video series concerning different techniques for electrical circuit analysis. And this video, we're going to analyze this circuit again using nodal uh, analysis technique with the format approach. So we see we have nothing but current sources. 7 amps, 17 amps, and 5 amps here. And the bottom part of the diagram really is just one node. We could have all of these lines to simply funnel into one point. So there's one node at the bottom of the circuit, and that node is grounded. So here is ground. Now, up here, we have a node where the branch from this resistor, this resistor, and the branch of the current supply, and this current supply, so all meet. So there is one node in the upper part of the circuit. And over here, we have the branch of this resistor, the branch of this resistor, the branch of this resistor, and the current element all meet at this node. So, so far we have two nodes in the upper part of the circuit. And then here, this is a node where this resistor, this resistor, this resistor, and this current element all feed into this single node right here. And again, this is not a node because there is just simply uh, a conductor element that runs along up here. So if we wanted to, we could have just drawn this with the resistor coming right out of here, the one-fourth resistor, and the current supplier coming right out of that point. So these are just, this is just a conduction line right here. So this is the node point. So in the top part of the circuit, we have three different nodes. And as you've seen us do now in the previous videos, we designate a voltage for each one, V1, uh, V2, and V3. And now we're going to write down our current equations, since we have nothing but current sources in this circuit, we can write these down using the format approach. So let's start at node 1. OK, here it would be plus 1 over the value of this resistor, so that's 3 times V1, plus 1 over 1 is 1 times V1, so we have 4 V1, and then for this resistor on the other side, we have this voltage at V2, so we have minus 1 times V2, or just minus V2. Now, here we have 7 amps coming into the node, and 5 amps is going out of the node. So there's a net current of 2 amps going into the node. If it's, if the current is going into the node, then we write it on this side of the equation with a positive number. So this is from node 1. Now let's look at node 2. This one. Here we have three resistors connected to it, here, here, and here. So it's going to be V2 times the reciprocal of this, that's 2, plus the reciprocal value of that resistor, that's 3. So that's 5 plus 1 is 6. So, so far from node 2, we have 6 times 
V2. Now, also though in node 2, for this resistor on the other side is V1, so we have minus 1 times V1, like this, and here on the other side of this resistor is V3, so we have minus V3 times the reciprocal value of this, so that's minus 2V3. And also at this node we have 5 amps of current going into the node when we're using the format approach then that's written on this side and it's going into the node so it's a positive sign. So here is the equation from node number 2. Let's proceed along to node number 3. That's this one, and here again we have three resistors that feed into this node, here, here, and here. So it's going to be V3 times the reciprocal value of this one, that's 4, plus 1 is 5, plus reciprocal of that is 2, so that's 7. So we have 7 V3. And here we have V2 on this side of the resistor, so we're going to have minus 2 times V2. And then that's it. What's down here is 0. And we have 17 amps of current flowing into the node. So on this side of the equation, we have 17 with a, as a positive number. So here we have then three different equations from node 1, from node 2, and node 3. And we also have three unknowns to solve for, v1, v2, v3. So we have three unknowns, three separate equations we should be able to solve for V1, V2, and V3. So what we're going to do now is proceed along. And let's take a look at our first equation. We have 4V1 which we're going to write up here minus V2 and let's say plus 0 V3. That equals 2. Now try to keep things in focus. From node 2 we're going to have minus V1 Then we have plus 6 times V2 minus 2 times V3 equals 5. This equation now is written here minus V1 plus 6 V2 minus 2 times V3. And then from node 3, 0 times V1 minus 2 times V2 plus 7 times V3. And that's equal to 17. So here are the three equations that we have to work with. Again, three equations and three unknowns. So what we do is what you saw us do in the previous videos. Notice that for our unknowns, V1, V2, V3, 
we have these written now so that their coefficients form this column here, here, and here. And the first step then is to take the column of these three numbers, so we'll have a 3 by 3 determinant, and determine the numerical value of that 3 by 3 determinant. So let's get that out of the way. Here we have 4 minus 1, 0. minus 1 plus 6 minus 2. Zero minus two plus seven. So here's our three by three determinant, and we proceed as we've done before. It's going to be four times the value of this two by two determinant, and again cover up that column. cover up the row, and we have 6 minus 2 minus 2, 7. Then it's minus sign for the next number, which has a minus sign, so I'll make this plus 1 times this subdeterminant, and now we cover up the first row again, and now cover up this column right here, and for the determinant then we have minus one zero minus two seven. And then we have zero times this two by two determinant, which of course is going to be zero. So here we have forty two minus plus four, that has a value of thirty eight. And here we have seven times minus one, that's minus seven. So here we have four times thirty-eight, and then minus seven. And this would be a hundred and twenty plus thirty-two, that's one hundred fifty-two minus seven, so that is 145. So for this determinant, that has a numerical value of 145. Let's write it up here. We have 4 minus 1, 0, negative 1, 6, negative 2, 0, 2, minus 7. And that is 145, because we are going to use this now continuously when we're solving for V1, V2, and V3. And in fact, we have all the information now that we need to solve for the three different voltages. So let's solve first for V1. To do that, here we have the three column of numbers, the V1 column, the V2 column, the V3 column, and these numbers. So now we want to determine what is V1. We replace the V1 column with this column. So we have 2, 5, 17, and these two columns stay the same. So we have minus 1, plus 6, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 7, 
divided by 145, that equals V1. So, let's see. This will equal, again, expand it out using determinants. We have 2. And again, cover up that row. Cover up this column. And we have 6, negative 2, negative 2, 7. Then minus this number, which has a minus sign by it, so it's plus, and it's just plus 1 times this 2 by 2 determinant. Cover up the row and cover up the column. And we have 517 and negative 2, 7. And then 0. And this is divided by 100. 45. So let's see what we have. Here we have 7 times 6 is 42. Again, minus 4, that's 38. And here we have 35 minus a negative 34. So that would be 35 plus 34. Okay, this is minus negative 34, so that makes it a plus. So it looks like this has a value of 69 for that 2 by 2 determinant. So we have then V1 equals 2 times 38 plus 69 divided by 145, and this is 76. That'll be 15 carat, that's 145 divided by 145. So we know that V1 equals 1 volt. Try to keep things in focus better. Now, let's look at our circuit. So we know that this is 1 volt. Now we've yet to determine V2 and V3. Once we do that, then we can determine the current throughout the resistors uh, in the circuit. I don't think we'll have time to finish that in this video. Come back, join us in the next video, and let's get this taken care of.